Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Couch Crocheter. Episode 81, Hats. I'm on a hat kick, and I'm enjoying them. Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Couch Crocheter. I wanted to stop up tonight at headquarters and show you the three hats that I've made. Sorry about my voice, I've been going through something, I don't know what it is. It's been cracky all day. <clears throat> I don't feel any kind of way, it's just been cracky all day. Um, so a little while back, I made a hat and it was the only, well, actually I've made two hats. Uh, so it wasn't Steven's hat where it was the hair bone, but the, um, divine hat by fiber spider. Um, he's the one who came out with a tutorial for it. Um, I know I'm a little late on this bandwagon cause it came out like two years ago and everybody was doing them, but they're still doing them. And I... Did one of them and I fell in love. So I thought this weekend why well, I needed something mindless to crochet. Um, on that original video of this hat that I showed you guys. I told you there was like another yarn or two that I wanted to try it with. One of them was Ferris Wheel. And the other one was um, Mandala Tweed. Mandala Tweed. Um, so while I was up here, before we went over to my sister-in-law's house, I stopped up here and got the, um, the Ferris wheel. So the first one I'm going to show you, and I don't have this one live, kind of a funny, crazy story. I was over at my sister-in-law's house and I finished it and her brother-in-law from her husband's side, um, loved it. Absolutely loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Like, it wasn't, I didn't even have my ends tucked in. And he's like, yo, can I try that on? And I was like, absolutely. Well, um, he ended up purchasing it right then. So I had to, like, quickly tuck my ends in and get everything ready. Um, so I have a picture of it that I did take on their kitchen counter. I'm sorry, the quality, if it doesn't look all that great. Um, I wanted to quick take a picture before I handed it over so I had something to show you. Um, so here's that one. And again, it's made out of Ferris wheel and it's a Lion brand yarn. The uh, color that I used was Morning Java. It is a four weight number four. Recommended needle size is seven or a 4.5 millimeter. Recommended hook size is an H or an eight or a five millimeter. This does have 270 yards, 247 meters, three ounces or 85 grams. Machine washable and dryable, 100% acrylic, and made in India. Um, so I did not use the full cake of that. This is what I have left of Java. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do with this. I'm sure I'll find something. I'm going to put this in my scrap pile. Um, I'm sure I'll find something to do with it. So then I finished that one, and I think the next day we might have went over again to set up something. Oh, for, and for my, um, so Stephen's daughter, so anywho, a family member's 20th birthday. That's what we went over there for. So I didn't have time to run up here to headquarters, and I didn't think that this would make another one, so I didn't want to start it and then, you know, play yarn chicken and not have enough. So I was at home, so I dug into the um, mystery tote of yarn that is um, at home, and I found a candy shop. So then I still had this with me, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, oh, you know, 207 yards. This says it's a number four, but it is a little thin, so I believe it to be like on the number three side. Um, and I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll make one or two. Um, out of this candy shop. So I'll go over this one with you. It's Candy Shop Premier Yarns, 100% acrylic. Uh, do, 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 do. If this is a number four, recommended needle size is an eight or five millimeter. Recommended hook size is a USI nine or 5.5 millimeter. Machine wash cold to tumble dry. It is made in Turkey. And this color is called Skittles. Now this is one of the ones that were rare because they had to change the names to some of them in this collection, I imagine, for trademark and copyright reasons. 
Um, so I don't know if it's still called Skittles in this color, but this one is labeled um, Skittles. So with 260 yards, I think I thought, why can't I make two hats out of this, right? So this is the first time other than like a mandala blanket or, you know, one of the uh, waffle stitch blankets that I made that I'm following in like a color pattern. This is the first time that I can say that I have taken a cake, ripped apart the colors within the cake, and then made my own distinctive color sway of the yarn. So I guess technically this is my first time, um, what's it called? Uh, color controlling? Color controlling? So I'll show you the first one because this is the first one that I made. And then I'll, you know, go with you my thought process. So here's the first one. So I started off with this, like, uh, blueberry color, I'm calling it. And then once the um, blueberry part ended, I think I ran out a little premature, which you can see right here. I was hoping that it would do all of the rounds of the hat in one solid color, but I did run out and it was just like that much. I don't know if I'm holding it too far, too close. So it's just like that much that I ran out. So I ran with it, I kept going, and then I kept going into the rim, and then I ran out of that particular, like this part of it, right? And then this part was a whole nother little ball. So then I switched over to that and that's the color that I finished with. So I'll insert a picture of it here on the back of the couch so you can get a better look. I think it turned out awesome. I love the blueberry color. I do love the candy shop yarn. It does say that it's a number four, but it's a little bit more on the fluffy side of a number four, um, I believe. So now I'm just going to show, you know, you guys what it looks like on my head. Being all cute in the divine hat and don't mind my... Fro, I don't know how it's looking today, but there it is. So I thought it turned out great. And you know, the divine swoops, I'm, I'm loving them. And I think I've come to realize the pattern within the pattern, if that makes any sense. You know, the first time you go around, you do doubles and then doubles again. And then you do one and then, a, um, and a back post double crochet and okay so you do like two I don't know Greg goes over it in the video for fiber spider he does a great job explaining how you do it but I think I finally got the pattern within the pattern so there's that one so then I was like okay on my second one I'm gonna again start off with a solid color then I kind of went into this other color that I thought would blend and then I ran out of that color and then went on to the same color that's at the bottom of the other one. So I started off with this bright pink. Then I went to this uh, lighter pink and the same blueberry blue that's in the other one. And then I ran out of that one. And then I finished off with the same color that the other one finished off on. So I did end up getting, oh, let me show you. Oh, let me show you first on the back of the couch what it looks like. So yeah, I whipped these up and it's kind of funny because we had to come back up here to headquarters and I forget why. I think I had to get something for Tina. Oh no, I had to get my mom's. Okay, so my mom wanted the last pair of slippers that I bought that I, no, I didn't buy them, that I made. <laughs> she wanted to buy them. And she also bought one of my um, tea towel topper hot pad sets. So we had to come up here and get that. And then we were just waiting around for something and I forget what that was. I think they called Matt downstairs to do something on the forklift. So I started off these, both of these, um, as just doing the center um, and following the pattern again, just for the center. And I think I did the first two rounds of increase on either one. And then that's when we left. That's when the pattern clicked in my head that it was two rounds of one, two rounds of two, three rounds of three, four rounds of four. And then if you wanted to keep going, you just do more rounds of four. And again, if you ever made this hat or watch this pattern, then you'll understand what I just said. 
So guys, that's all I have is just those three hats. Um, I did pick out a, um, uh, the tweed that's behind me over my shoulder right here. I don't know if you see that little hole, um, next to the wishbone color. I didn't start it yet and I'm not sure that I'm going to start it anymore, even tonight. While I'm up here, I'm going to work on the mandala blanket and get more um, rows of that done because I am slowly running out of time with that. Um, but again, you know, the weekends where I like to hang out at sometimes people's houses and there's big crowds and I like to, you know, just sit there and have small conversations with people instead of bigger crowds, um, you know, I'll crochet. So this is what I worked on over the weekend. I always like a mindless project on the side to work on as well as, you know, the big mind project of a mandala blanket. So again, um, the link is down below. Oh, and the needles that I used. I'm so sorry. I did follow um, Fiber Spider's uh, suggestion, and I used a J hook for the top of the um, hat. And then as soon as it switches over to the brim, I used a H hook just as he suggested um so guys oh and this is what i had left of the uh candy shop which really 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 i played yarn chicken with the second hat i mean guys that's like nothing that's that's nothing like i can't even do anything with this <laughs> um so yeah i was able to get two hats out of it and i played yarn chicken and this time dawn won yarn chicken lose <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to finish my night off with my daily reading from Melody Bitai. It is Journey to the Heart, Daily Meditation on the Path of Freeing Your Soul. And I do believe that we are on January, th no, February 3rd. Yes. Break through your resistance. We sometimes resist new lessons. And what we resist the most is likely to be what we need the most to learn. <laughs> our lessons usually come from inner conflict the action we should be taking the idea we should be learning is sometimes hidden behind the walls of resistance there's a border a barrier we need to cross to get into the part of the lesson i'm sorry to get into the heart of the lesson most times that barrier is within us Lessons require us to let go of old feelings, old beliefs. If they don't, we wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a lesson. We'd already know them. Sometimes the very thing we feel guiltiest about doing, the place where most resistant is, resistance is visiting, the person you're most convinced we shouldn't contact, or the behavior we're tormenting ourselves most about it exa is exactly what we need to be doing. And more often than not, the lesson we're learning is not what we think it is. We need to embrace the surprise element of life. Embrace the mystery of life as it unfolds, as the lesson appears, as we grow and change. Do what you need to do to break through your resistance. Often, that means simply seeing your resistance for what it is. Remember that the point of the greatest resistance is often the place of the greatest learning. Alrighty, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for stopping by. I want to say hello and thank you to all the new subscribers that I've had recently. And thanks to everybody who's been coming by since the beginning. Please make sure you like and subscribe. And again, check out the link below of Fiber Spider's um, tutorial on the divine hat. Be safe and stay groovy. Bye.